Hello everyone. Today we will discuss introduction to laser production. From our unit laser and fiber optics. We know that light is an electromagnetic wave and it shows certain fundamental properties like reflection, refraction, rectilinear propagation, interference, diffraction, polarization, dispersion, etc. There are various sources that are available of light. Uh, there are various sources available for light. Uh, we know that the natural source of light is our sun. There are certain other sources that are also available for light and we know that laser is one of the source. So, here is the reflection spot for you. What difference do you observe between traditional source and laser source? So, you can see on screen there is this incandescent bulb which is traditional source and on right side you can see the laser source. You can pause the video for a minute and you can give the answer. Have you spotted the difference between incandescent bulb and laser? So, if we talk about the wavelength for a traditional source of light and laser, Okay, for traditional source, the wavelength is polychromatic. It consists of multiple wavelengths. From the diagram itself, you will come to know that there are various wavelengths uh, included. Whereas laser, it is monochromatic source of light. It gives us a single wavelength. When we see directionality, we definitely know that laser is highly directional source of light. Whereas incandescent bulb, it is random in direction. So, it is divergent and laser is highly directional. To talk about coherence, what is mean by coherence? When the two uh, uh, waves, they are in phase with each other, they are having same phase, then we say that they are coherent to each other. So, to talk about coherence, incandescent bulb that is traditional source, it gives us incoherent lights since they are random in direction, they are polychromatic in nature. Whereas laser, you can see the waves of laser, they are having same phase or constant phase difference between them and therefore we say that laser is a highly coherent. So, uh, this traditional source of light, it is also unpolarized light. We know that it has vibrations again in random direction, whereas laser light, it gives us a plain polarized light. So, these are the differences between traditional source of light and laser source. So, as laser is highly monochromatic, it is highly directional, it is coherent source of light and it is plain polarized light, which source would you choose in your reading room? Will you choose laser to read the book or you will choose bulb to read the book? Surely, we will go for bulb. But due to these properties of laser, it has certain applications. So, let us first see how this highly monochromatic, coherent and directional beam is generated and the principle uh, behind this production of laser. So, to start with laser name, laser is an acronym that stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. So, L stands for light, A stands for amplification, S, E stands for stimulated emission and R stands for radiation. There are three main processes that are important or that are required for laser production. First process is absorption of light. Second is the spontaneous emission of energy in the form of radiation. And third is the stimulated emission which is involved in the acronym of laser. So, these are the three important processes. So, let us see what this absorption, spontaneous emission and stimulated emission stands for. So, when we see atom, atom consists of nucleus, you can see it is shown by blue in the diagram and electrons are revolving around the certain orbits uh, around the nucleus and this is the classical model of atom. 
so these orbits they have certain energies and these energies represents the energy of atom so you can see that electron in first orbit with energy e1 okay and that electron is in first orbit now the electron in first orbit it can jump to the outer orbit that is second orbit which is having slightly higher energy if we provide energy which is equal to or greater than e2 minus e1 so when this sufficient energy is given to the electron electron can jump from inner orbit to outer orbit and this atom model can be represented in the form of energy level diagram like this so here even energy level consists of this electron when a photon of energy h nu which is equivalent to energy difference between e2 and e1 is given electron absorb energy of photon and it can jump to the outer orbit or the higher energy orbit that means it attains higher energy level that is e2 so this process of absorption of energy by an atom in ground state to get excited the process is called as absorption next process is spontaneous emission so for spontaneous emission consider this electron is present in excited state that is in energy level e2 the electron cannot be present forever in this excited state but it will remain in excited state only for a short span of time and that time is 10 raised to minus 8 second when 10 raised to minus 8 second that time is called as a lifetime electron in excited state completed the electron decay back to its original energy level with the emission of photon like this the emitted photon has energy equal to e2 minus e1 so this emission of photon by an excited electron after completion of lifetime so this emission of photon by an excited electron without any external impetus is called as a spontaneous emission so this spontaneous emission takes place without any external force this electron spontaneously decay back to its original energy level when lifetime is completed with the emission of photon and hence it is called as a spontaneous emission the third crucial process for laser production is stimulated emission so for stimulated emission consider again the electron is present in excited state that is in energy level e2 yet the lifetime is not completed so when a photon of energy again e2 minus e1 is incident on the system what do you expect to happen this photon forces electron to decay back before completion of lifetime and during this transition from energy level e2 to e1 it emits two photons with matching energy so both these photons have energy equal to e2 minus e1 you can see both these photons they are traveling with the same direction they are having same phase that means they are unidirectional they are coherent as they are having same energy they are highly monochromatic so these photons must be laser photons so this is how we can obtain laser by using stimulated emission but to perform stimulated emission absorption and spontaneous emission these processes are also important 
So, laser we can see laser is a light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. So, now I will make some statements you have to correct me. First statement is the two photons are emitted in two different directions. My second statement is the new photon has half the wavelength of incident photon and my third statement is the two photons are in phase with each other. Is it correct? I fear I am not because the two photons that are emitted they are having same direction. The new photon has the same wavelength as that of incident photon if you have observed the animation and third statement is correct that means the two photons they are in phase with each other. So, this way we can say that using stimulated emission, absorption, spontaneous emission we get laser photons which are having same wavelength, same direction and coherent to each other. This, this, these processes are predicted by Einstein in 1917. That means he predicted that under, under certain circumstances a photon incident upon a material can generate a second photon of exactly same energy that means same frequency exactly same phase that means coherent they are in the same state of polarization and they are having same direction of propagation. So, in other words a coherent beam is resulted and that beam is nothing but laser beam. Though in 1917 Einstein predicted about this emission of laser photons first actual laser was developed in visible region actual laser was developed in 1960 by T H Maiman and that laser is rupee laser. Thank you so much.